in Kurdistan, Tillerson uh, negotiated a direct uh, deal with the Kurds without uh, talking to the State Department. He told the Obama administration about it after the deal had been secured. And, um, you know, again, we're going to get to the Russia piece in a second, but the core part of that transnational sovereign interest of Exxon was simply to allow the oil and the natural gas to flow. That's it. And this is another point here where people, I think, are going to need to start having a little bit, I, I hate to say it, I'm sorry, but a little bit more subtlety in their thought process. Because, yes, do these companies and do these entities already exert a vastly disproportionate role in U.S. foreign policy? Absolutely. But do you sometimes have people like John Kerry, like the Obama administration to some modest extent, and actually even if you read Private Empire, there were uh, some humanitarian projects that the Bush administration attempted to implement that Exxon undermined because it interfered with the smooth flow of hydrocarbons. There's a preference for stability over everything else. And if you have an administration or a secretary of state who says, okay, the U.S. is running hydrocarbons, we've got to wire the world up for them, but there may be, there is some ocean protection deals we want to do as the, this administration has done. Maybe we want to push through a Paris agreement. Maybe we also want to support civil society. Maybe we also recognize that we are going to need to, at some point, just based on the science, move to a post-carbon world. Um, if you don't see the difference between that and a, a insulated CEO of an oil company who is now going to take over the State Department, who has one agenda in mind, then you got a delusional view about politics. We'll get to the Russia piece in a second. Let's watch Reince Pribius, who is definitely not um, as sophisticated an operator as Rex Tillerson, um, but this is going to make him very comfortable. I think the Bannon stuff is a little new to him, the overt racism, neo-fascism, but uh, Reince Pribius' whole purpose in politics as a suburban lawyer um, and RNC chair is to be a bagman for corporate America and extractive industries, and I'm sure he's incredibly happy that one of his uh, masters is going to be the Secretary of State. Here he is on Morning Joe. Let me ask hey, you about Willie. the choice of Rex Tillerson to be Secretary of State, the nominee. What was the advantage in the end that he had over Mitt Romney, if you believe that Romney was the last two or three candidates? Why Tillerson over Romney? Well, I mean, number one, um, it, it comes down to chemistry. Uh, Governor Romney is impressive, but so is so many of the others that we talked to, Mayor Giuliani, uh, David Petraeus, Bob Corker. Um, but at the end, it was a massive, um, you know, it was chemistry, it was presence, it was vision. It was also the ability that Rex Tillerson had to maintain relationships across the world in many places that aren't the easiest places to have relationships in during many different administrations. So obviously he's very good uh, at being a diplomat. And, you know, someone like him is a diplomat that, uh, that happens to be able to drill oil. And the good Lord didn't put oil in all freedom-loving democracies across the world. And yet Rex Tillerson was able to make this work. Um, and Donald Trump and Rex Tillerson, um, they hit it off, and they have a, a similar vision of how to get yeah. things done, and Ryan's that's really all, what did it, Willie. A lot of cons it's all about the chemistry. And by the way, God put oil in all sorts of freaky places, places with yellow people and brown people and also Russia. Don't we love Russia? <laughs> the chemistry comment... It makes me it raises my eyebrow a little bit because that's almost trolling, right? Like it makes you think, oh, hydrocarbons. Yeah. That's the chemistry. Yeah. Well, I, I doubt that Reince operates on that sophisticated. I'm of just, a level. I'm just thinking it's like the way Trump was playing. You can't always get what you want. Like it just seems like there's somebody back there. Like can't always get what you want. Trolling. Rolling Stones. Um, great guys. By the way, oh, I'm sorry, Mint. I just didn't feel the chemistry when I forced you to give me a hand job at the French restaurant. Oh. Sorry about that. Let's touch on that for a second because he did point out that Rex Tillerson <laughs> does. Reince was at the table. Can I just point that out? That he sure was. The one picture didn't show that. I so need it to just confirm makes it this. even worse. I don't think I don't think he likes your technique there, Mitt. Sorry. Apologies. Ah, oh, what the Christ. You haven't been in this business for decades. You don't know how to give a good friggin' hand work. I don't know what you're doing here. 
It's because you're so goddamn arrogant. You think you're a friggin' Mormon prince. Some of us have been toiling in the friggin' cornfields just for an opportunity to meet with the friggin' Koch brothers and get a personal check from them. And Mitt Romney walks around here like he owns the goddamn place. Um, Rex Tillerson built uh, his success at Exxon uh, in many ways through facilitating and conducting deals with Russia. And as Wright said there, uh, the good Lord didn't put oil uh, necessarily in countries with democracies. In fact, there's something uh, that doesn't have much to do with the good Lord. It's called the oil curse. And it's a sort of body of study about how resources like oil in countries where at least the, it hasn't been sort of there isn't proper governance and there isn't proper redistribution mechanisms can often end up hurting and undermining the institutions of those countries profoundly. There's probably a tier going down from a uh, place like Equatorial Guinea, which is another place where Exxon has done a lot of deals, made a lot of money, which is a brutal limited dictatorship that benefits barely accrue to the population. Then a place like Saudi which is an incredibly repressive and abusive monarchy, but the money does flow a bit. And then Norway, which is like, you know, probably the only place on the planet that has figured out how to essentially run oil in a social democratic manner, maybe also Alaska to a degree. Um, but uh, as Cole points out, Exxon would prefer to operate in Equatorial Guinea than Alaska. And let's just touch uh, briefly a quote again just from Cole. Tillerson's success within Exxon was, was attributable, in part to his, attributable in part to his work he has done in Russia. He forged close ties with both President Vladimir Putin and Igor Sechin, a close ally of Putin who runs Rosneft, one of Russia's oil and gas giants. In 2011, Tillerson flew to the Black Sea resort of Sochi to soin, sign a joint venture agreement with Putin under which... ExxonMobil would partner with Rosneft to produce oil from the Arctic, a project made easier by the retreat of Arctic Sea due to global warming. Now, I have no doubt that Democrats will make hay of this, but I think it is much more important, and this is a way in which Russia conversation could be used and leveraged intelligently to have a broader conversation about these issues because Rex Tillerson is and is another example of a perfect representation of what the Republican establishment wants. Condoleezza Rice is another person who would not endorse Donald Trump, was apparently very unhappy by how crude and stupid he is. Uh, Rex Tillerson was personally recommended by both her and I believe also Robert Gates, who have direct financial interests in Exxon. Exxon is a sovereign state. It's also core Republican Party foreign policy uh, ideology, frankly. So if you say that as an example, instead of just doing Russia interfered, Tillerson's close with Russia, Russia conspiracy theory, say, why do you want a CEO of a company that does not respect American sovereign foreign policy, including under the Bush administration, that values its shareholders over American security and is very close with a strategic ally, a strategic adversary, whose shared goals are, in fact, benefiting from the climate crisis which is one of the core engines of security crisis we face on the planet. If that is connected as a story about corporate greed, as a story about corporate overreach, as a story about global warming, as a story about, in, a, in an ancillary way, Donald Trump again portraying another promise about draining the swamp, then there might be some payoff. Hey, it's Sam Cedar. Why don't you uh, subscribe to this channel? You can do so right uh over here. Over. Subscribe.